Hi, I am really glad that you're here. You know, in a world that's largely based on social media appearance and other meaningless things, it's really rare to hear people speak from an unfiltered, genuine, heartfelt place. I'm your host, Lacey Hartzell, and this is Temporary is a safe, casual, non-judgmental space for you to hear from other people's experiences with their mental health. And through this, I hope you can see that all of our voices are powerful enough to help other people feel seen and heard and validated. Because even when you feel like it, you're not alone. Are you afraid of what's next? Me too, me too. You seem the best you guess. It's fine. Hey everybody, welcome back to This Is Temporary Podcast. <laughs> Today I have here with me TC Mathurn. He is an actor as well as me. And he and I actually met on set for a film that he booked, you guys. So TC, welcome. Oh, Hi. Hey. Thank you for having <laughs> me so much. Yeah, what is the name of that film? So everyone Your can laugh, laugh is so infectious. It's such a great <laughs> laugh. Truly. It's like Thanks. it makes me feel so warm. <laughs> you should be so happy. Look at that. It's great. Uh, what is the name of the film? It was a lifetime movie called A Murder to Remember. Um, oh. Yeah, he's so funny. good, too. So I, I haven't actually seen it yet because it just came out, right? Well, you know what's funny about it? It did come out, uh, I guess, I don't know. I don't even know when it came out. Um, I um, I play a really bad guy in it. Yeah. And, I mean, you got to see the, those auditions were intense, right? Listen, I, so I just got to you i have to toot your horn that's the reason i remembered your name i looked for your name on the sheet the sign in sheet so i was like he stood out and now we're doing a podcast together but seriously you're acting knowing that transition who i met you to be Mm -hmm. in the room like as yourself and you're like my name's tc and i remember you saying something like kids called you trash can yeah, TC. I remember in high school, like people always are saying, trying to think of what TC oh stands for. Oh my gosh. And then some kids in third grade were like, get out of here, trash can. And that one, <laughs> kids are so mean. I've heard but much more offensive than that. <laughs> yeah. I've heard much more offensive than that, but that one's the most, that one hit me the most in my heart. Well, it's so funny because we remember our own like tragic moments, but I remembered yours. <laughs> <laughs> like, after you said that, I was like, oh, shit, that would suck. Like, like, so I was like, yeah. that's it. And you, anyway, it was just fun seeing you transition from chilling in the holding room mm. to that character, which people will see you bring to life if they watch the film, which you should. Um, and yeah, I was just, I was like, you just stood out and your, your acting is tr- so transformative and authentic. So um, I know that comes from a space of being an authentic person as well. Well, that's you know? really sweet. Yeah, I mean, that's what's such a strange thing because people that saw the movie, uh, I'm a b- really bad guy. Like, really Yeah, bad. no, you like, are. That character. Yeah, and... Terrible. And it is a character, you know, it's getting into it, but, like, I got some texts. I was like, yo, you're a creep, bro. <laughs> and I'm like... <laughs> <sighs> but I, I, I think I, I try to take it as a compliment of, like... I Absolutely. Absolutely. But, uh, it's it's intense yeah yeah it is okay so i i um want to go back to your intro though of telling us about yourself and before this movie before this creepy character and the building yeah. of him what what what's your life been like what's your That's story such a sweet question i i get very and i'm glad i feel this way and i'm aware of it i'm like very um nervous right now talking about it you, <laughs> you know and i'm like i'm not i'm not great at talking about myself but um yeah I'm from Louisiana a small town in Louisiana um and yeah I I was one of those kids I didn't really like anything growing up you know mm-hmm. I, I I was like I, I tried everything I did all the sports oh, okay and I remember seeing little like as a little kid being observant of this of like seeing my cohorts and seeing my peers and seeing a light in their eyes of like sure. passion behind something like kids that played baseball and they were so excited about it right. and I couldn't give a fuck about it <laughs> you know what I mean like I was like I was like hoping that like I wouldn't get put in like, you know yeah. what I mean? Well, it's interesting too. Cause in the South, I don't know if it's that way anywhere else, but I'm also, I'm from Alabama oh, right and on. I know that even for the girls, sports is pushed on all of us, you know, especially sports like is, football and baseball. 
sports is pushed and yeah. And it, and it was also, I mean, I'm fortunate. I, I was raised by a single mom for the most part. And, okay. um, but she, she didn't push me because of baseball or sports. Sure. She just wanted to socialize me. She was like, you got to go right. hang out with yeah, other this kids. This is what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and I, in, in hindsight, I appreciate that because I think even though I'm don't play baseball, you know, or, yeah, or whatever yeah. sports I was playing or didn't enjoy that in hindsight, yeah. I really appreciate because the social aspect that it brought me was right. huge, you know, hanging yeah. out with my peers and, and getting to know other kids um, was a really smart move on her part. And I right. think it was very informative for me. Um, but I, <laughs> I'm so bad at talking about myself. <laughs> I, um, so I, I didn't know what I liked. I didn't like anything. Yeah. I remember being a senior in high school and I sat down with a counselor mm-hmm. and she was like, well, you're going into, you're going to college. You know, I went to LSU. She was like, um, what do you want to study? I was like, I don't like anything. I don't know. You know, I told her and she was like, well, just what's your favorite subject? And I like studying psychology. Yeah. And she was like, well, study that and then you'll figure it out. Right. And awesome. I said, okay. So I started study, studying psychology at LSU and. So were you at that point kind of like, I want to figure out why I'm not super passionate about anything yet. Like, were no. you trying to get inside your own head yet? Or were you just like, no, psychology just interests me. And you're more interested in other people, like already kind of that actor's perspective. No, I didn't think about it from that perspective okay. yet. Okay. I, th- I think I was just freaking out a little bit. Oh, sure. Okay. Because all everyone else I knew, whether they were genuine with themselves or not, they knew they were telling me that they knew what they wanted to do, you sure. know, whether, right. whether that was right or wrong. From my perspective, everyone else had their shit together. Right. So I was just like grabbing at anything I could to be yeah. like, yeah, I'm doing this. Right. Yeah. Um, and so I stu- I was just started studying psychology. And, and yeah. at the end of my freshman year at college, I sat down with another counselor and she was like, wow. you've got time. You've got time. You'll figure it out. And then yeah. the next year I sat down with another counselor and she's like, you got time. You got time. Junior year, senior year, I sat down with another counselor. She's like, oh, well, it's too late now. <laughs> You're graduating. <gasps> and I was like, I don't know what I want to do. You know, I, yeah. I didn't want to necessarily work in that field. I, my senior year, I'd worked with some like abused children and, and some and some tough situations, which it made me truly appreciate anyone that wow. can work in that field. Was that I through could, a specific like um, nonprofit or organization? No, it was through, I wish I remember the name now. It was through a like a tangentially through LSU. Okay, right. And then okay. I was also a counselor at a summer camp for a long time okay. working with um uh m- with uh, disabled children oh, or okay. I, is that like and now I'm like embarrassed about it like what's the right terminology now right Do you yeah know? so I mean I worked at an equine therapy center for children with special oh, needs cool. yeah. and we just um we we always just said um use the terminology especially but I think to say I mean I think there are many different ways that are still like relevant and not slanting I mean obviously we know you're not you know to use like the r word um yeah. but well, and my, every everything I say about like I just I never know what words to use which sure. is like I guess a sign of my privilege but it's no, like I think you use adequate words I think from my perspective but also sure. I mean I'm limited from my yeah. framework you know right. what I mean well, <laughs> I haven't been any, chastised anything yet. I say to de- to describe anyone like that comes from a place of love so I absolutely, know, absolutely. You know what I mean? but I know that we're both and this is the beauty of what's happening in 2020 as um all over the place it has been I think the beauty is people are Brene Brown has a quote like, I'm not here to be right. I'm here to get it right. Mm-hmm. And that's that's that like he's got a book. That's her book Oprah. right there. I love her. I have so many of her books. Do you have her latest? No, I don't have her latest. I have that. Have Darren this Greatly. one, Darren Greatly. Yes. Yeah, this is a good one. I got a few I love more it. around. Yeah. Um, same. But but so you get it. it, it and I think that yeah. that's evident. And I think people are able to gauge that day to day when encountering people that are like, oh, like correct me if I'm wrong. You know what yeah, I mean? And it's all like, we can do, or all I tell myself, like just what you're saying is I'm trying, you know, it's yeah, like, I'm yeah. not going to keep getting it right, but I'm, I'm right. going to try to. I'm here to get it, it right. right. Yeah, yeah. 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 I love that. Cool. Okay. So you were doing all different kinds of volunteering and, 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 and working with children with special needs and, and um, counseling. So 
where did that lead you? Were you kind of like, should this be my field of focus? No. So it led me and I, you said a bunch of, I wasn't doing a bunch of, I learned okay. very quickly. This was not for me. <laughs> okay. um, and I, that's what I'm saying. I respect the people that can do it yeah. and I love them so much. And I'm so totally. glad they're out there. I could not take it home with me. Right? So I'm so yep. sensitive yep. that I would go home and I'm still thinking about these Carrying little boys it. and I'm like, yeah. and I'm carrying it around all day long. Yeah. So I go, this is not for me. Totally. So I graduated, um, but I, or a little, and I'm so grateful for this. My senior year during winter break, I have an uncle that lives in Chicago. So I went to go visit him just because I like to travel and, and yeah. you know, free place to crash. Yeah. And he bought me a ticket to an improv show. My first improv show. Which, ever- which uh, show did you go to? Like I went Second to, City? I was at Second City, but IO, I don't know if you remember, they're closed okay. now. Improv Olympics? Like, improv Olympic, yeah. Nice. Um, was the first place I saw long form improv. Wow. And that was the, the place. Herald. The Herald, yeah. That was yeah. the place where I saw a show and literally the it's like you know how in movies you'll see like divine light come down and it's like mm-hmm. oh that's genuinely <laughs> how like I that's I know it's not what happened. That's how I remembered in my brain. But it's the way you it experienced was, it. A hundred percent. I saw it. <laughs> I saw this show and I was like, this is the thing. This is my baseball. This is my, you know, the thing that I love. Uh, I even remember I used to carry around a $2 bill that my grandmother gave me and I carried it around for years. It was in my pot, in my wallet all the time. And after the show, the people on the team and the improvisers were like, um, and he's actually a friend of mine now, Bill Stern. I didn't know him at the time, but Bill Stern's apartment had burned down and he was raising money because he didn't have insurance. All his stuff was gone and they were passing around a hat to put a donation in. And I pulled all I had in my wallet was that $2 bill. And I was like, it meant so much to me that I gave them that $2 bill. And I was like, take it. You you gave me more than I ever could give you back. Wow. It was so nice. Yeah. It was what so a sweet. spiritual moment. Truly the most spiritual moment I've ever had in my life. Um, I love that. And I love, and we'll get to everything, but I, I'm connecting just as an outsider seeing that you have a new podcast called Passion Buffet. Yeah, and I do. Key, and it's the coolest name. I love oh, that. Thank you. So I've, I've listened to the first episode. It's great, guys. So we'll, we'll, get, we'll get to that later. Okay. But, but just hearing the moment for you that your passion mm-hmm. fell into your lap. Yeah, is true. so cool and so insightful into the creation of who you are as an artist and a person, mm-hmm. you know, and, and how well, passion is what fuels us. That's life. Passion equals life to me. You and know? something interesting, and I think it's worth noting is that, because I think it could speak for people, whether they're old or young, looking for their passion, because I know a lot of people, no matter their age, are always, I'm so grateful that I found the thing that I love yeah. at, ever in life, yeah. but especially at a younger age, you know, I know 60 right. year olds that don't know that what their passion is. Wow. As soon as I let it go yeah. and was like, just like, screw it. You know, I'm like, yeah. I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm just a bum, you know, or whatever I was at. I'm like, instead yeah. of trying to control it and wrestle it, right. I let it go. And it literally, as soon as I did, it fell into my lap, you know, yeah, which it was found so you truly, wow. truly. I yeah. love that. I love the yeah. way this world works. <laughs> so after I, so I, um, I graduated. I went back from Chicago, graduated LSU, and immediately moved to Chicago. Okay. And I uh, and I improvised over there for five years. I was an improviser. Who did you on. train with, or who did you, I guess, um, work with in general? In terms, uh, everyone, you know, a lot. Do you? Well, I get. Are you are you asking because you know some improvisers up there that teach? No, I'm just. I'm just. Well. I know basic schools that I, I would go yeah, and yeah. just watch. Oh, for so fun. yeah, I, I I was at Second City, I was at IO, Annoyance. Um, there's a little theater there called CIC, which I was a big part of. Okay. Um, wow. I did it all. Yeah, I was so you hungry. For five years. Yeah, I was up there for wow. five years. How, are we the same age? How old are you? Oh, I'm much older than you. I'm I'll be 32 in a a week or two. I think. What? Yeah. Yeah. I did not know that. That's how I, that's what I love about this industry is you never And I don't know. know how old you are, but I'm, I always assume <laughs> I'm older than everyone. Yeah. How, how old do you think I am? I this think you're t- 23. 27. No, so you guys, yeah. you, you're going to have the same thing as me for yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, <laughs> everyone yeah. knows now. I'm just kidding. <laughs> everyone. <laughs> you know what's interesting though about getting older? And I think again, talk about my, 
um, privilege of, I think being a man is much yeah. easier societally. There's not a ton of pressure on me sure. about getting older. That being said, I love well, getting older now. I'm yeah. like, well, I'm sorry. What, you, what were you going to well, say? No, I was just saying it's funny because I had a conversation with a friend about this, about how like the the way um, people, especially in, in this country, define beauty and how it's like beautiful for a man to age. Yeah. And then women are like, no, I can't look like I age. Yeah. And I'm like, no, it's beautiful to age. Like you age how you want. <laughs> and that's what that's what's a thing is because my opinion, I don't. I've gotten to the point now where I don't give it. I'm not, I, when I was in my twenties, I was like telling everybody my opinion and it's yeah. like, no, I'm quiet now. <laughs> if they ask for it, I'll give it. But it's like, yeah. no, it's not. I don't need to be shoving my opinion down. Every, I used to be like, lady, stop wearing makeup. And it's like, fuck you, dude. Like, yeah. shut up. You know? Cause yeah, it's yeah. like, whatever gets you there, gets you yeah. feeling good, you know? Um, but that I say that just because I really, love not just women or men but when people just age gracefully my right. mom was complaining like every other person during quarantine she was like she dyes her hair and you know she has gray hairs coming out and i was like i like them let it grow yeah. let it let that and so she's got like no gray hairs everywhere and i really appreciate her awesome doing go that. mom yeah, yeah she's a badass, <laughs> truly yeah um, so I'm curious for you then with studying psychology and, mm. and, and, and knowing that, you know, this is temporary is under this whole umbrella of mental health sure. throughout your journey in your life. Uh, uh, what has your mental health experience been like and how aware have you been of it versus like, was it more just kind of like, I'm just getting through, I'm just finding coping. You know what I mean? How sure. there's like that awareness versus like. Mm -hmm. I'm just, nothing's wrong with me. I'm just, you know, and ultimately I don't think anything's, I, I don't like that or eternally flawed. Something's wrong. It's even as a bipolar mm -hmm. person, it's like, oh, that's what's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. I'm like, no, that's what's me. It is right. not wrong with me. It's just what's me. It's like, yeah. now I just understand it. And yeah. that's part of stigma, right? For it's sure. Changing the, the dynamic of the way we look at it. Mm -hmm. But what, what's that journey been like for you? And, and what all have you encountered and dealt with? Yeah, I think mine started a little bit later okay. or not not later but I didn't start working on mental health stuff until five around five years ago so the whole time okay. I was in Chicago you know Chicago was the most fun time of my life yeah truly it was, and it was I grew more there than I had ever you know I was experiencing things for the first time that right. really opened me up in a lot of beautiful ways and I appreciate that but I wasn't yeah. it was also the least healthy time of my life okay not so just mentioning. And I'm curious to see what you think about this. Just a little blip to add in to sure. color your your responses. Um, I think some of the best comedians and and stand up comics and improv everything we you know the people we've looked to have come from such tortured background. Mm, Whether it yeah. looked like it on the outside or not, internally, right. um, they were dealing with a lot of stuff. And that's again the thing with mental health is you don't have to have this tortured story of like what's mm -hmm. happened in your life to be tortured on the inside. Right. Right. Um, well, and, and that's the and, thing too, is looking back, I have an incredible life. Truly. I would not yeah. trade my life for it, literally anyone else on the planet. And I, I, and I want to preface by saying, I think I had a very fantastic upbringing and childhood. It was not a circumstance of external variables. I don't think sure. that sure. being said, I was a very sad kid. Okay. Um, and I don't know where that comes from. I'm still digging into that, you know, yeah. figuring out where, why, you know, talking to that kind of inner child kind of thing. Yeah, but, totally. Same. <laughs> um, but I didn't start figuring out mental health until, so I was in, in Chicago for five years. And in my fifth year, I got a phone call from my dad. My dad's the strongest, uh, or I say my dad, my stepdad. Okay. Uh, my, my mom remarried and, and he's a gentleman. Um, okay. He's, he's been in my life um, since I was like two. You know, he, wow. he, he's been around forever. He's a, a father figure in my life. He um, he called me crying. And he's the strongest guy I'd ever, I'd never heard him cry before. And wow. I was like, what's wrong? And and I also want to say before, first that she's okay now. But my mom had ovarian cancer. Wow. They found out and it was very bad. Yeah. And since it's been treated, she's okay. She's alive and well. She's doing fantastic. So grateful for that. Yeah. But at the time I was like, I got it. I got to go. 
Mm-hmm. I got to get back, you know, so I moved back home immediately. And I was in a really bad spot because now in hindsight, it's a blessing in the skies because of where it took me. But in the mm-hmm. time I was, I left the place that I was so happy and learned so much, you know? Right. Um, and through that, I started reading a lot of philosophy, Oh, you know, cool. older Greek philosophy, Marcus Aurelius and, yeah. and Seneca and, and all these other yeah. great thinkers. And that's where my path began in terms of mental health. Oh, OK. For me, you know, because um, I went down this path of like stoicism and, yeah. you know, and what that meant for me and yeah, reading so much. And it's so funny that these guys that were alive thousands of years ago. Mm-hmm. We think we, we we're, we've evolved so much as humans, right. but we haven't. Right. The technology and society and all of these things have evolved, but our phys or like phys. Yeah. I always have t- trouble with this word. What is it? Phil- physiological. Phys- yeah, our physiological nature yeah. has not caught up with right. our external the, nature. I love that the way that we're able to think. Right. It's just like and what we're ruminating on. It's like if you do. I love that you tapped into Greek um, philosophy because. Yeah, a lot of the same ideas we're just ruminating with now and creating new words for were already born then and different oh, yeah. words. You know, it's just like they used what they had to work with. Right. To, well, to and they like it. reading about Marcus Aurelius, a mm. great Roman leader, yeah. writing about what his parents thought about his decisions or being homesick. Yeah. You know, it's like that that's something that I was like, oh, it, it made me very much feel like I was not alone. Yeah. Wow. Even though these people have been dead for so long, you know, it's like, it's like, you're not the only one going through it. Totally. And then another thing I'm super grateful for is, um, about three years ago, I, I, you know, I I had been working. So at that point I started meditating a lot, which, Mm -hmm. and journaling. And I think that helped with my awareness. So you're talking about being aware. That's when the awareness started because, you know, I, I know everyone talks about meditating and journaling, but the only thing I'll say about it is, my awareness started to click in. Right. So when I did get sad or did to cope with this or did do this, Mm -hmm. it's not like I would stop my bad habits, but I was at least aware of them. Sure. You know what I mean? I was like, Oh, question like before where I might've been sad or depressed or angry. I just was those things. I wasn't aware of them. Sure. Um, Now, did you ever at any point um, seek help from either like a therapist or a psychiatrist or a doctor to to get help for medication or even just um, therapy? Yeah. And that's that. So that's another thing I'm super grateful for. And that was a happy accident. Maybe I was work. I was working a job and I had it's so funny. So I've I've been a full time actor for four years now. Nice. And I quit my job. Because I was like, sorry, guys, I'm working, you know, I'm I'm doing my thing. I can't work here anymore, which is a beautiful thing. Again, so grateful. But my insurance was going to run up for that job and I was going to switch to SAG insurance. So in that time, I had a bunch of extra savings. I had like four grand in health savings. Nice. And I had to use it by the end of the year. I had like two months to use four grand worth of medical. So I I was like. What do I do? So I went to every doc, and I'm so bad. I'm gonna admit it right now. I'm so bad about going to the doctor. I'm Me awful. Too. It's Me so too. bad. I, I gotta go. Um, I'm literally putting off getting blood taken like right now. I oh, hate no. getting my blood taken. I, I throw up and pass out. Oh. It's like a seven year old deal. <laughs> I know. No, but, but it's I, like I avoid. Yeah. I avoid if I can. I'm like no. Nah. Yeah, it's. I don't. <laughs> I, I actually respect your dis- reason more than mine. Mine is just because I'm a, f- I am, we talked about, it, I think before we started recording, I'm such an old soul. I'm like an old man. Like, no, I don't want to wait in a waiting room. I've got to go cut wood. Uh, okay. So you, you wood all day. I don't know. I'm like, I'm like um, I don't know old people who chop wood, but so maybe in Louisiana. I, I had four grand worth of savings. Um, okay. In, so, um, you had like four thousand um, dollars built and up. So I went to all the doctors, and you you were like, I guess I could go to a therapist. That my <laughs> last resort, and literally, I was like, I had like, I I'd used two grand, and I'd done everything. Well, wow. and I had two grand left over, and like not a lot of time left. So finally, I was like, well, screw it. I'll, I guess I'll just try this whole therapy thing. <laughs> I get in there, and I I went to the, my therapist day one. I was like, before we get started. 
can, do you have like a payment thing where I can just dump two grand? Oh just give you two God. grand? And she was like, yeah. And so I gave her like two, I mean, not gave her, there was a system set up for it, but I, I essentially gave her, I put two grand on a tab. And Wait, then I lost you for a second. You for said like, you essentially I don't even know how long, what? A long, over a year's worth we'll of therapy. Give it a second. <laughs> and I went and I did it. And um, wait, you, know. you just came back in. What, what did you say? You you said you didn't essentially dump two thousand, but <laughs> no, I didn't like just du- just dump two thousand dollars on her. I know I'm getting like a, a lag here now. I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. Um, like a two thousand. I didn't like give her two thousand dollars. There was a system set up, but I essentially oh, put sure. two grand on a tab, and then that got me like okay. whatever a year's worth of therapy. How many? Wow. Awesome. Yeah, it was really awesome. And then that got me. So since it was in my brain free. Yeah, I was like, "Well, I'll go," you know, just go yeah, and do it. And now I'm well. so grateful I did because it it um, wow. put me at least on the journey. I don't, yeah, I always think about it of like, it's like, obviously you hear this all the time, but the journey, you know, I feel like my journey now is just beginning. You know, yeah, like yeah. everything before my mental health journey mm-hmm. is now just beginning. Whereas everything else was like prepping. It's like a camping trip I'm going on. Yeah, and everything else was my prep work. Like I'm packing my like. <laughs> studying philosophy that was me packing my tent you know journaling that. and meditating that was me getting my rations together sure. and now, so now you, well, it, i was yeah. just saying it, i i feel it's funny you make you paint that image because it's like now you feel equipped to mm. to not get eaten alive by the like proverbial bear yeah whatever yeah, could be yeah. coming at you in life <laughs> yeah thanks for using my analogy like you're working with it i appreciate that oh i love yeah. painting the picture <laughs> yeah why well, yeah and i think that's a good way to put it is like yeah i don't know it's it's a bit good and i'm now i'm very i was very pessimistic before okay. and now i'm very optimistic in a really awesome. great, a great way yeah. yeah i i love that and i i think it's and you'll probably understand this because um, I likewise feel like I've gone through um, kind of an awakening on a deeper level this year of like, oh, this is who I am. And this is the way I can view things. This is the way I can respond to things. And it has, even though on the outside, I think I've always looked like an optimistic person. Sure. Um, and I, I don't know if this is by default of dealing with bipolar depression or what, or maybe just trauma, but I wasn't very hopeful and I wasn't very optimistic on the inside. And so people who were pissed me off, Yeah, you know what I mean? And and it's not like I hated them, but it was just kind of like uh, they would say things and I would be like, I love you. And I know you mean well, but like, stop. Yeah, (laughs) I don't, I don't, there's no silver lining here, you know? And that, that was what my soul was wrestling with was like, I can't find the right perspective until at least consistently until this year. Um, oh, right. But maybe that for me, I don't think that was always my case. I think when I was younger, I was, yeah. But, but you said when you were younger, you remember being sad. And and do you think, because I as well, those are the memories that stick out to me the most, even though I know mm-hmm. I was also a very playful, joyful child. But, but I yeah. think it's because, and you mentioned this, that it's because I was sensitive. Um, and do yeah. you think that's what it was for you that you've, have you always been a sensitive person kind of feeling others' feelings? I have been. Looking okay. back, I have been, but I didn't always, I only figured that out recently. And wow. the, I think one reason it was difficult was because I was feeling all of this, but I was suppressing it all too. Yeah. So it's a concept. It was so exhausting, you know? Yeah. And I'm just getting to the point now where, because I feel I can relate to what you said a second ago about outwardly being a very, very joyful, pe- playful person. Right. And I would always do that. I would, no matter how bad I felt on the inside, I would put on this, I'm not saying you were doing this, but I'm saying me, I would put on this face of like, all right, you got to be TC today, you know? And then it was just exhausting. It's weird because it's almost like we feel, and I think this is part of society, but we feel like we've been, you know, or maybe we have been conditioned to think that the only versions of us that are acceptable are the versions that are cheerful. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, it's like, I don't know if you struggle with this, but in addition, I felt like if I didn't deliver that version of me that people were expecting, which expectations kind of are the root of suffering, I think, but, um, but I felt like if I didn't deliver 
people mm-hmm. were like, what's wrong with you? Are yeah. you okay? And yeah. then they would put all this weight on me, or maybe I took on the weight. Yeah. Um, and, um, and I didn't know what to do with it. And that was before any of my awareness work began. Right. So I was just like, uh, I'm disappointing people and mm-hmm. I can't really be me. And so it teaches us to kind of hide that version right. that isn't as accepting or acceptable. You know what I mean? Well, and that I do, I know exactly what you mean because and two sides of that. The first thing is, is like, yeah, that's the thing is like, if I show people who I truly am, the you show them the good, but you don't want to show them the bad. Because if you show mm-hmm. them the bad, they won't like you or accept you or love right. you. Right. It's that fear of rejection to the core. Yeah, really and something I'll, with. oh, I mean, well, something I'll <laughs> say to you and your audience that I'm learning with, and I don't know if it's right or wrong, but it's what I'm going through right now is sure. Now I, I do my best. It still happens, but I do my best not to put that mask on, that mask right. of joy. Totally. Yeah. And and they do say that those things you say, it's not a fear of it. They will say what's wrong. Right. Oh, I'm, and I'll say I'll be like I'm sad. Yeah, I'm nervous. I get nervous yeah. a lot. I'm very anxious. I'm nervous. Yeah. And people say they will. They will. Because sometimes it makes them uncomfortable. Right. They will say those things of like, oh, right. don't be, or you're good, or it makes, right. but the way that, what I have to tell myself is the way that they are reacting is not none of my business. Exactly. And it's not my responsibility mm-hmm. to regulate their emotions. Because what right. that's what I always try to do. I try to protect <laughs> not just me, <laughs> but I try to protect everyone else as well. I yep. try to protect them from, mm-hmm. I will hurt myself emotionally to mm-hmm. protect other people's emotion. Mm-hmm. But that's not my responsibility. No, it's very refreshing to hear you say this because that's something I have dealt with my whole life. And I I came from what I, you know, this past year or two have learned is to call a codependent family dynamic. Mm. And um, it caused me to do what you just said. And it's very comforting to hear other people talk about their experience with it and their journey, learning how to break from that conditioning of feeling like you're responsible for other people's emotions and and regulating others. And it's like the freedom that we needed to experience, especially as sensitive people, empathic people is, is the realization that we don't have to, we don't have to regulate theirs. And and you're right. Like I, I also, I'm, I'm trying, and I've always been very open, but I felt like I was still apologetic even um, over the past, like five or six years on my mental health journey, that's been public. Um, at least what I had made public. Um, and I still would be apologetic. And now this year I've worked on being like unapologetic uh, and being like, yeah, no, this is what I'm dealing with. Leave it at that. And, and, and it is funny. Like you said, people do jump to, if you're honest with them, they jump to trying to fix you sometimes. Mm -hmm. It's like, well, well, you, you, or, or or negating it. You shouldn't be invalidating it. You know, Mm -hmm. you you don't have to be, look at your life. You you just moved into a new place. You should be fine. And I'm like, which yeah. in, which which in in makes things worse in a yeah. way because it yeah. doesn't make it's like sh- it's like your life's perfect and you're like oh my you're right my life is perfect and I still right. feel bad I'm what a, a piece, piece of, of shit. crap yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I I'm ungrateful <laughs> yeah it's like yeah. oh now I have that to contend with as well right is these people telling me like and yeah. I've experienced plenty of that and I obviously you have as well most people do um. Mm. And it's, um, I guess, to people on the outside of, of working with, um, you know, say you or I were to come up to someone and we were genuinely expressing our feelings or anyone else, um, a loved one is expressing their feelings to you and it's anything south of great, um, yeah. then just to have the response of, uh, you know, I'm sorry, or I don't, you, don't, you don't have to apologize, but just say like, can I help? Offer yeah. it. But just know, like, saying, well, that's okay. Like, I'm here for you. But it doesn't have yeah. to be a jump to that. Um, I don't know. Everyone's different with what they want to hear in their dynamics. But I know for me, and and like you said, we don't want to hear, like, well, you shouldn't be. <laughs> or yeah. why? why? And like, yeah. I, like, literally I'm, I'm, sometimes. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, I'm just thinking of, like, it's kind of a pet peeve and I'm working on it because I know I, I genuinely have gotten to the place where I think everyone's doing their best. I believe yeah. that. Yeah. With what they have, no matter what yes, that looks like. Yes, with their framework, yeah. What it, right, but because I do get nervous a lot. Anxiety is a huge thing for me. Yeah. When And now I've, I don't, like, I'm not, like, I don't say I'm nervous all the time, but if someone's right. asked how you feel, I go, I'm nervous. And they go, yeah. oh, don't be. I go, oh, why didn't I think of that? You know, it's like, <laughs> well, that's, it's like, oh, that's, I just don't be nervous. I'm like, oh, okay. I won't the, be like, 
comedian side of you though that that like and it's beautiful I still like that and and my friend Aaron on one of the last episodes he he's very much he defaults like that's his humor over what he deals with yeah, you know sure and I like it because not only but but my question to you is is that more for you or is that for um is that still a different way you found to make that other person comfortable or does it kill two birds with one stone no, I think I think for me it's a polite, funny way to tell them not to say that. <laughs> or like, like, be like, like instead of being like, you know, it's like a it's like a breaks the tension, but I'll, and it's kind of being a smart ass a little bit I of love like, that. but it's like no, don't tell me not to feel nervous because it's yeah. unhelpful. Yeah, you're right. It's, I like. I'm know. gonna start doing that with my depressive states. Yeah. Just, I I have gotten sassy, but it but it's not. I think the people that know me, they know, and not to cover myself up. I'm a very broken bitch sometimes, <laughs> and I have said things where I've been like, I'm bipolar. Okay, <laughs> it was just like yeah. a stopper in like a social public setting to someone I didn't know, and well, I was like. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty through it. Well, and something I want to speak to this because it, it goes on two points we've made so far, and, and I respect your your bi your bipolar mm -hmm. disorder. Is that a disorder? Bipolar disorder. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. I respect your bipolar disorder. But for people, anyone listening that doesn't have bipolar disorder or another type of condition, and yeah. the same with. So I want to go back to therapy. Look, I feel myself yeah. getting manic right now. I'm getting so excited talking you can. about it. But <laughs> but. Therapy, I hear a lot of people go, I don't need therapy, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like, the therapy is good for the human condition. So I'm like, are you mm -hmm. a human being on the planet? Yeah. Then you, And not everyone can do therapy, and I respect that. Right. But if you can, go do it. Just like right. go to the gym or, or exercise. It's, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And well, so, and that's the, you touched on, there's things that aren't even therapy that are therapeutic. Well, that's you know improv. Going that's, to the gym. Yeah, improv. improv exactly. For me, 100%. Exactly. You know, is, and that's what I tell my students. Um, we're actually my partner, uh, my business partner that runs LATCO. I have an improv theater in oh southern gosh. Louisiana as well. Yeah. I didn't even know that. That's I never so told you cool. that. Yeah, no. it's cool. It's been oh, tough, wow. but it, it's, it's the best. Cool. I, when I moved back, there was no improv scene back to Louisiana. Yeah. And, or at least um, in, are you in Baton Rouge? I'm in Baton Rouge. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, cool. Technically, I live in a small town between Baton Rouge and New Orleans, but the Got theater it. then in Baton Rouge, mm -hmm. and there was no scene, improv wow. scene there. And so a friend of mine um, that I met, Betty Mojica Milano, um, she helped me. We we, wow. we built the theater together, and it's really cool. Cool. But she says so. I was going to quote it like it was my quote, but I yeah. I want to give her credit for it. Um, yeah. And I don't know if she got it from somewhere else, but improv is she says what you just said is it's not therapy it's therapeutic so yep. sometimes we'll have students come in and they're trying to work through some stuff and it's like mm -hmm. you th that you need therapy you don't right. need improv you need right. therapy um but vice versa you come out of improv class and everyone's smiling there's a reason for that it's because it was yeah. very therapeutic it was know? a regulation of emotions that needed expression you know you know and it was or, in a safe space yeah too. can i uh, it was it's not even a regulation it's a deregulation Ooh, emotion. yeah okay which is nice and i'll I say like this, that. And yeah, this because there's no we're rules talking, or format there's no there are some of those things we give training wheels but that being yeah. said what i tell students about improv is I'm not here to teach you how to, I'm not adding, people think like, oh, you're going to add things on to me to make me funny. I'm not adding oh, things on. Right. I'm taking things away to make you funny. I love that. Right? Yeah. 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 When you think about little kids on the playground playing, you know, whatever game they're playing, you know, whatever their favorite game is. Right. They're hilarious. They're hilarious. And also <laughs> they're unfiltered. Right. Yes. So it's like, yeah. and their imagination is so wild. And that's mm -hmm. all we're doing is getting ourselves back to now. Totally. I'm like pitching my, like improv. No, I but love I so love much. it. I love it so much. And I'm so glad that you're talking about it because you never know. Someone could be listening and be like, that's their light bulb moment of their passion. Be like, I need to check out improv, you know, because I know for me, I was terrified of improv and sure. I'm one of the most playful people I know. That's like a characteristic of who I am. I'm just playful and weird. And, um, and I found so much freedom in college when I finally got the guts to audition for the improv troupe mm -hmm. and I made it on, I was like, this is liberating. Mm -hmm. I would be like sick with excitement before yeah. every show. 
like legitimately physically sick with excitement. Oh yeah. I know exactly <laughs> what you're talking about. I mean, and I love that you call it excitement and not nerves, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's the same thing it is, you know, yeah. in our bodies. Yeah. And I need to do that because I still, I've been doing improv for over 10 years and I still wow. get sick before shows. Yep. But I, it's because I care about it. You yeah. know, I care about it so much. Yeah. Um, and I'll say this too, for anyone listening about improv is the scariest part is like signing up for the class or doing it. Yeah. Right. And, and the, what I love about improv is it's taught me not to not, not, how do I say this? Not to not fear failure, mm -hmm. but to face the fear of failure. Right. Yes. So now when I feel fear, I still feel fearful that that feeling doesn't, has not gone right. away from me, I love but that. instead of retreating from it, now I lean into it. And every time <laughs> I've leaned past fear, good things have happened and improv Absolutely. taught me that because we're Absolutely. constantly we don't know what's going to happen yeah. and a lot of times in life i think it's fear of not having control mm -hmm. and improv teaches you there is no control and when you mm -hmm. try to have control that's when it yeah. goes poorly you, know? you make yourself suffer well and it's very brene brown of you because <laughs> she, she and improv in general i feel like those go well together mm -hmm. right oh, yeah. brene and, and because she is all about hey ride that fear into courage zone you know, mm -hmm. like that's where you, you have to override. Fear. You have to not even override. You have to ride with fear. You have mm -hmm. to acknowledge your fear and work with it to get to courage, to get yeah. to the fruit of, like you said, the whether it's the experience of that improv show or or nailing that audition or, sure. or interview or, yeah. or, or talking to that person you're afraid of talking to. Mm -hmm. It's like you'll never know unless you greet fear, look it in the face and go, let's go do this together. You know, when I even think I agree with you 100 percent, I'm like, I have goosebumps right now. <laughs> it. It's so nice. But it, I don't know if you can be I don't know the exact definition of courage. Yeah, but I don't think you can be cur courageous without fear. Exactly. Can you? Yeah. I mean, it's like if I'm not so. scared, then I'm not courageous. Right. So you have I, to yeah, be. exactly. So that's why when we look at um superheroes and I don't mm. just mean like Marvel superheroes. I mean, just like in general, the way we view icons and people mm -hmm. look up to is like those people have lived their lives being filled with fear and overcoming it or working mm -hmm. with it to do mm -hmm. something with it. It's not that they're not scared. And so that's the most comforting thing to me at looking at the people I strive to be like knowing that they've faced so many rejections. Yeah. They have endured so many failures. And so in my moment, I'm trying to literally retrain my brain now to celebrate my failures and to celebrate the moments that make me physically sick with fear and, and anxiety, mm -hmm. because I'm like, I'm learning in this moment, I'm being refined. I'm like, you know, something unrefined being tossed around by these waves until I'm a smooth stone, you know, yeah, it's like, yeah, and then yeah. I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, then I'll be ready, you know? Yeah. yeah so, yeah. so yeah, I think, I think it's the perspective. It all goes back to the way we, and, 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 you'll know this with improv is what helps with that experience, you know, mm -hmm. just practice experience oh, yeah. of like time and time again, showing up to confront the fear. People, people always, whenever they see me improvise or talk to me off stage, I get this a lot. Mm -hmm. I hear, I love that. What you do, I could never do it. And yeah. that I, no matter who it is, yep. I mm -hmm. tell them they're wrong. First mm -hmm. off, it, this is more anecdotal, but when I started doing improv, I was very bad. I just did it a lot and yeah. now I'm better than I was then, you know? Right. Right. And literally Even, everyone can be good at improv. Yeah. Everyone well, can. Everybody has to. And, and I think there are, you said, I will call this cause I agree. I, cause I even Please. with acting, cause I've had multiple people come to me with acting and be like, what's your story and how can I, da, 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 da. and I think sure. that would be cool. And like, but I've never started and I'm already in my twenties and and I'm like, Listen, <laughs> I'm like, yes, I have known I wanted to be an actor since I was four, since I can remember. Um, and I'm grateful that um, I always had movies and plays in front of me to know like that was my light bulb. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't think you have to start with this like innate sense you know sense of like this is my thing from a young age to step into a passion and purpose for yourself because that's the beauty of us all humans, not just artists and labeled artists. Sure. We're all creators. We're creating mm -hmm. ourselves every day. If you yeah. don't like what's going on with your life, 
find a new path, make a new choice, think a new thought, you know? Mm -hmm. And so I just, I think it's really cool that you tell that to everyone because technically I agree. Like, yeah, yeah, if you want to start this tomorrow and commit yourself and you're that passionate and that excited by it, do it because you will see results. Well, and that's another thing too, of like speaking to myself, I I hope it doesn't sound like I'm putting myself on a pedestal, but just to be an example. It's your episode. I will. I'll do it. Just uh, (laughs) just as... Just, I, I just want to make a point, and I know yeah. people hear about this all the time, but about the age thing, I didn't start doing scripted acting work till I was oh. 28, 29. Wow, awesome. So it's like you, and it took me, so whenever I moved back from Chicago, yeah, I'd still never, I was because acting and improvising, there was a lot of similarities, but like I wasn't, I, was, I wasn't in Chicago being like, I'm going to be. An actor, well, film and TV. Yeah, yeah I didn't know I anything about saying. film and television. Yeah. I didn't even know that was an avenue. And then yeah. someone saw me in an improv show in Louisiana yeah. and was like, hey, here's, hook, here's, hook me up with your agent or whatever. You know what I mean? So it was like, yeah. and then that's, and then now this is my job, right? Yeah. So it's like, you don't, there's never, like, just do it, right? Yeah. And I think and it's the ne- reason you do it. Yes, you never know what doors will open and you have to have that yes and improv attitude of like, Mm -hmm. sure, okay, this is what I'm working with. What's next? And I'll add on and I'll do this. Why not? It feels good. But I I love that you said that too and that that's the direction your life took. Because Mm -hmm. for me personally, as an actor, I'm not surprised at all that that this is your background because my favorite actors to work with are improv actors Oh yeah. because I feel like I, I feel like that's kind of, and I did have some training in it, but knowing the different types of training I've had and how I've always wanted to do this. Um, I've always kind of been doing it. Um, you know, but I, I just love an actor I can trust mm. and an improv actor is an actor you can trust because what is the, the basic thing about improv acting is it's not about one person up there. It's about the team. Yeah. You know, oh, it's 100%. about us carrying each other and knowing I can trust these people to have my back. So right. I'm not going to have a moment where I'm like, uh, uh, it's like, they'll pick me up. Right. And, and I feel the same way. And I felt that in the audition room with you in Atlanta um, and, and other actors I've worked with, which is like, yeah, sure. We're working with a script, but you know, as well as anyone that, we're bringing to life real people, um, Mm. whether they actually exist in life or they're written in, we're turning them into real people. Yeah. And, um, and there's real moments uttered in between those words, whether we say them or not. Yeah. And it's, it's cool to, you can totally feel the difference between an actor who's like fully present, fully in the moment and anything goes. Yeah. And it's like even the improv that happens after the scene's over and we kept going. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? It's that kind of stuff that's movie magic that feels like we've transported ourselves. Yeah. And and um and I, I I've only fully experienced that with improv actors and, and I'll say theatrical like stage actors because they also are mostly improv trained. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And and they're they're used to being in the moment and having things in the moment on stage going awry and we have to right. recover it together. Sure, you know. When there's so camera, many different you just got cut. <laughs> right, yeah, and it's a little more safe, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, th- there's a a little bit. Uh, everyone has a different path, right? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. and we're all aiming for. We can be aiming for the same thing, right? So yeah. whether it's a film actor or an improviser. They are still aiming for being doing authentic good work, right? exactly, and storytelling under the umbrella sure. of that. Yeah, and speaking of umbrella under the bigger umbrella of life, even it's like we're right. all aiming for, for the most part, I think, fulfillment and happiness, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But we all have different ways of getting there, right? And I think that's helped me a lot in terms of not just forgiveness for others, but forgiveness for myself. You know, yeah, yeah, of like getting getting to a certain place. Like, I, this is my path, right? And then right. The, someone else has a different way of getting there, right? Right. And that way of getting there might be cutting me off in traffic. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Or like or like giving me the finger or breaking yeah. my heart or, you know what I mean? But it's... Yeah. But that's their path and their way of getting... They're doing the best. No matter how awful the thing someone might do, That that's... They're doing the best they can. Right. You know? Well, that's such a healthy perspective um, that is very... Um, freeing for yourself so that you you don't hold on to little you know stupid things that happen throughout the day because you know like that doesn't have anything to do with me you know we don't have to personalize everything and I I feel like that's a lot of what I've been learning and reading lately is just like I don't 
like I, I'm learning to bless everything and everyone, even things yeah. that are like, oh, well, that sucks. She gossiped about me. Mm -hmm. I'll bless it. Like, yeah. I know that sounds weird, but it's like, that's part of her process, you know, and, and that's part of my process that I know now that that happened and, and, and that I don't have to turn to ego and go, mm -hmm, you know, it's like, does that serve me? No, yeah. if it doesn't serve me, why would I hang on to it? You know, well, that, just to sit in pity mode. <laughs> that's the thing too. And it, it my, I can genuinely say my mom, this is going to sound crazy. And obviously luckily we've gone over it so you can see where I've connected the dots. Yeah. But I can say my mom getting cancer was the best thing that ever happened to me. Sure. Right. Sure. So speaking about blessing now that we, I've connected the dots of like, that's what made yeah. me move home. She's better yeah. now that now I'm an actor. I would Aligned. not have been an actor if it yeah. weren't for moving back here. Yeah. And, um, and that's the thing, you know, it's like, and, and so, yeah. And a lot of times people are like, oh, well, when you're saying people are doing their best or bless them, even if right. they're doing bad things, they're like, you're lying to yourself. And, and here's the thing, whether you are or aren't, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're lying yeah, to yourself yeah. either way, you know, because yeah. it's like a lot of times we make up these stories in our heads that aren't even true. Like sometimes I'll be. Oh, that's what anxiety does. Yeah. It's so know? crazy. I'll be in traffic and one little thing will happen. And then I'll start reeling out and making up stories in my head. And five yeah. miles down the road, I'm so angry yeah. about, you know, my <laughs> friend from third grade doing this thing. And I'm like, and then luckily from being yeah. mindful, yeah. I'm like able to catch myself and be like, what the How did I get there? Yeah. What am I talking about? And then yeah. you like laugh at yourself and keep driving. Yeah. But some people unfortunately don't have that. And it happens to me too. I don't I didn't want to point fingers. It happens to me. Sometimes I don't see myself reeling out as soon as I would like to. Right. Because sometimes people are like, that'll happen to one person on the road and they'll reel out, then they'll get home to their kids and they're still pissed and you yeah. know, and then they don't even know why they're pissed anymore, you know. Yeah, yeah. And they just let that one instance the rub little them the wrong way grows. and turn into yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. And and I, I think it's interesting you said like whether you're lying to yourself or not, because I think for me, uh, I think it's kind of like fake it till you make it in a way. It's the mm. way my, my therapist would tell me to bite a pen because look. It smiling. makes my smile, yeah. you know, and, and it, it, it's similar to the affirmations that I force myself to say in the morning. Sure. And sometimes it's a force <laughs> oh, to be yeah. like, I am good, you know, mm -hmm. I am kind, I am peace, you know, and I'm just like mm -hmm. looking at myself going, mm. but it's the truth of like, if you speak and I think the way we think, which turns into uh, the way we talk, which turns into the way we act. Mm -hmm. Those all are very strong things, yeah. very effective, um, you know, energetic things. And so it's like if I am to spend my time thinking and telling myself I am shit, I yeah. am, you know, like uh, a failure, I mm -hmm. and I hang on things that don't serve me, um, mm -hmm. I genuinely start to – turn that way. So if we're walking around the world being affected by little things that have nothing to do with us, but we just were involved somehow, yeah. whether it was someone cutting you off and it just pisses you off and it, it turns into a negative filter on that mm -hmm. day. And you're, you're like, I can only lens. see yeah. exactly. Then it's like, it will bleed into everything else. And, and I'm just learning to catch that. It's like you said, the mindfulness work of, Oh, how did I get here? You know, it's okay. You're my thing has been like, my nay, my my nay, <laughs> my nay, my day <laughs> is never too far um, gone, and mm. I am. That's what I used to write that for myself because when I was really dealing with my depressions, and it's interesting too that you said that. In hindsight, what happened with your mother and her sickness is mm. been a blessing in disguise for you. I mean. I, I went through a divorce and I'm 27 and I got married mm -hmm. really young and it was really tumultuous and confusing. I felt very naive oh and I, I felt very much angry about my trauma growing up and my divorce and marriage and everything. I was just so angry and so like mm -hmm. pu putting my pain in a place that didn't serve me for the longest time mm -hmm. until I finally was able to switch that perspective of like, in order to know who I am, I have to know who I am not. I have to know what I don't like about me. And I, I got through, I went through a lot of really heavy depressions and suicidal ideations and, um, and, and really wanted to end my life so many times. And, 
And even those moments of wanting to do that, those were moments for me to reveal that I didn't actually want to die. I just wanted to change my situation. Um, I just wanted to get out of the pain that I was in that was made worse by the situation I was in. And I had within me the power to make a choice to get myself out. And I did. And Mm -hmm. so I'm so fucking proud of myself for going against, especially like the the Christian Southern upbringing I had that was like, Mm -hmm. this is what you do and this is what you don't do. And I was like, I have to do what's best for me. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of an awakening for me of like, I have to, I have to figure out. And and now I I can finally a couple years removed, you know, look back and bless. I'm learning to bless those times that were like, you know, because of perspective and because of the, the way I, I don't know, just realizing that we can heal and we can, um, have everything we want, the happiness and fulfillment you talked about. Mm -hmm. It's not circumstantial. You know, because you could be an actor, um, I'm just using our situation, sure. an actor with everything happening for you on the outside and be miserable. Sure. Oh, absolutely. You know, you could. I you see could... that all the time. Exactly. You know, I've worked with actors that a lot of people look up to and, yeah. and you see them between takes and they are not happy people. And, yeah. and from the outside, they've got the whole world, you know, yeah. in front of them. So exactly. I understand what you're saying. Or even people who have who are in another industry and they have all the money and everything. Mm-hmm. It just looks like they go on extravagant vacations and talk about social media, people projecting like, Oh, this perfect filtered life. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's not real. That's a portion yeah. of it. And I, let's celebrate the good that comes from that. But it's not, I think we get so wrapped up in absorbing ourselves in other people's stories, mm-hmm. whether we know them or not, whether we're affected by them or not, but we just are so absorbed that we are, completely passing by all that we have going for ourselves. Yeah. You know, and how yeah. control we actually have over our own lives for fulfillment and joy. And, and I, I, I just, that's a huge thing I've been working on and, 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 and realizing lately because yeah, I've been on this mental health journey for years since yeah. I was diagnosed bipolar like six years ago, mm-hmm. but I, I, and I, I am such an advocate for therapy, advocate for medication, advocate for, um, you know, uh, talking about everything that you can under the sun to educate yourself of what you're dealing with, what mm-hmm. others are dealing with. But there's an added element that I didn't realize before because I, I still always felt a little helpless and mm-hmm. hopeless. Mm-hmm. I was like, well, I'm grateful for my medication. I'm grateful for my therapy. But, but I, um, yeah, I didn't think that. I had enough control over my own brain chemistry. Yeah. And and that my therapist slowly was working with me to help me see how much power I actually do have over whether I have what I deem a good or a bad day. You know, it's like I could be yeah. depressive and still have a day that I can label good because that's my yeah. choice to label yeah. good. Well, and you it's know? your choice to take your medicine and it's your choice to go yeah, to therapy. That's true. Right. So like I have to no one yeah. your therapist isn't picking you up mm-hmm. and like well, and you say you but have you're to, right. but no, you but don't I feel, have to. You don't yeah, have you're to. right. I you, could, not. You could not. Many, right. many bipolar, bipolar people, I think right. bipolar people especially are known for not wanting to take right. it because they want to feel the highs. They right. want to feel the hypomania. The main. And to be honest, if I wasn't taking my medication, I would feel my highs higher. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would be like on top of the world when I am, you know, yeah. but at the same time, extreme that exists there there's the other spectrum yeah. of i would be back in my suicidal lows yeah um and and i even this year i've had to have some medication changes because um it's been a hell of a year and a lot of changes have happened and oh, yeah. and i needed a little bit more to help level me out because yeah. i was still spiking on both ends mm-hmm. um but some well, i just like wanted that. to give you a little bit of a compliment in terms of that in terms of like you do have like like uh, letting you become aware of those places you do have control whether they look small to you or not right. of like getting the therapy taking your medicine um with the divorce thing it's so i probably shouldn't it sounds super smart ass but when i hear, hear people get a divorce i'm like <laughs> yeah. i tell them congratulations thank you thank yeah, you it means like, the end of a bad marriage <laughs> right and it's like instead i'd rather you get a divorce than yeah. be married to someone you Whatever I don't need to know the situation, but no, I'd rather but I'd rather what happened happen than you be in that situation exactly. for fifty years exactly. because of some religious or societal burden of yeah. becoming. And you know what's weird? Not to go back to it too. Well, I am. I'm going back. But 
to be, be a di- someone that's divorced, a divorcee mm-hmm. or whatever is like such a weird label. Yeah. That like, oh, now I am that. And it's like, and maybe this is just my perspective, but it's like, who gives a fuck? Like, it's yeah. like, I'm the divorcee, just like I'm someone that drinks Coca-Cola. You know what I yeah. mean? It's like, <laughs> yeah, cool label, bro. Like, it's like, how yeah. does that, but I, I guess, I mean, I'm sure there are people, I guess the reason that it is stigmatized because there are still a lot of people out there that have certain feelings towards it. Is that? Yeah. I mean, I think that's, I think that's everything. And I think that's what's so interesting about the subjectivity of labeling and judgment, Mm. you know, like it's it one, it's in one person. It could mean like, Oh, simply she's been married. She's not anymore. You know what I mean? And to another person in another area, it means a whole other thing. Like, Oh, you're a failure. You failed at your marriage. Oh, that's, you know, what women are supposed to be, you know, you get married, you have kid. what happened, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's just so many extra things. But I love that you pointed out, who cares? Yeah. Because that's that's my my goal now on a, on a deeper level. I've always worked on this. And it's funny. The things, this is so me, um, the things that I know ultimately people like about me, I don't care what they think. Because I'm like, people like that I'm spontaneous and goofy and funny and like Mm -hmm. um and silly and all that kind of stuff so i don't care what people think when it comes to that because Mm -hmm. that's an area i know i'm likable but there's other areas where it's like but i do care what people think when it comes to you know what i mean because it's like an area that's either you know like controversial or whatever it is i'm like oh but i need to be liked and it's because when there's like a movie i i I hate that this happens and i'm gonna work on but if there's like a movie or something that i did it that comes out and if I look at the fucking reviews, which I know I shouldn't, sorry, I curse so oh, much. I'm gonna. Oh, you can't. I'm, I'm not, oh no, 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 no. I'm this is unfiltered. Stop. Good. <laughs> I'm looking at these reviews, and I'm not gonna stop. But and no matter what, there could be five good reviews, and if there's one bad one, it's the one that sticks out. I don't care about the good one. Yeah. I don't care about the good ones at all. They don't make me feel good. They don't this. The bad one. I'm like, that's what sticks out. It I, but sticks I feel out. It's the you. Only one. But it's 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 that training with ourselves we have to work on. Where and and I know this because I I think I it's multiple things. But my awareness has led me to believe it's mixed between feeling like I was invalidated a lot as a kid or not seen. Mm-hmm. Um, and so that's why I think it's really hard for me to not care what people think because oftentimes in life I lived my life basing my value up on myself with how others perceived me. Yeah. And and I would ask everyone for question. I didn't even learn to trust myself because I would go to everyone else going, are you sure? Should I do this? Should I do that? What do you yeah. think? What do you think? And I was like, Lace, same. make I'm the decision, the yeah. you know? So, so the same way with reviews, I heard something, I think it was Gary V who said this. He was like, don't give a fuck what anyone says about anything. Like look at the positive comments, delete them. Look at the co- negative comments, delete them doesn't yeah. matter. You said mm-hmm. what you said because you wanted to say it. You wanted to put that out there. You wanted to make that work. You wanted to, you know, and so like, you know, it, I, I mean, I, I think there's something obviously on the outside to say about constructive Chris or whatever learning sure. we said, get it mm-hmm. right versus be mm-hmm. right. Um, but you know what I'm talking about, about like overall, when it comes to your work in a, in a movie, it's well, like, and why do we to, do that? Just to speak on that, Betty Mojica, again, my, my business yeah. partner, she, I, I want to give her credit for this, but she says all the time, she goes, no one is thinking about you in yeah. a good way of like, yeah. in, a, in a positive way of like all these times we think people are. Like as I'm reading the reviews, no one's like, "Oh, TC's the," you know what I mean? Or right. like this move, like they're already moved on to the other thing. Right. They're only thinking You're about right. themselves so often that it's like, and it's yeah. freeing in a way of like, I like that. Yeah, I mean, everyone's just kind of doing their own thing. So take the weight off your shoulders about caring what people think about you. But I'm the same as you in in what you just said of like, I, I'm in terms of like validation and be like, is this the right choice? And not trusting right. my gut, trusting my mm-hmm. gut's something that I've been working on lately. Yeah, I, yeah. I can't explain the whatever it is going on, but it's usually yeah. right, you know. Yeah, um, yeah, it is, and it's yeah. right for you. That's what's important yeah. is like tuning it, and that's why I think mindfulness and meditation work is so important. Even though it's so hard for me to be intentional with, um, I mm. really do work on even if it's just meditating for five minutes a day, um, yeah. that sitting with myself is teaching me to trust myself, teaching me to be my own validator. And it's like you said, the, the inner child healing, it's teaching me to reparent myself mm-hmm. and give myself what I felt that I lacked when I needed it when I was younger, you know, but I can still give it to me now. I think oftentimes it seems like 
at least for me, I, I used to get caught up in the past and be like, well, if this had just gone differently or well, if I wouldn't have this now, I'm like, but I'm acting like I don't have any control over the healing now. And I do, yeah. you know, yeah, I absolutely do. And so, so yeah, I think I, I talk about all this so much and, and I'm grateful because it's, it all brings us back to mental health under Mm -hmm. this whole umbrella for this podcast. It's like all these things about us inform the way we experience and work with our personal mental health Mm -hmm. because we have to like, we're, we're full embodied mind, body, spirit creatures. We Mm -hmm. have all these versions of us that we have to attend to a little bit of everything and we can't, just focus on the body, just focus on the mind, just focus on the spirit, because we are everything all together, you mm-hmm. know, it oh, ego, absolutely. super ego and, and mm-hmm. whatever. So I, I just, I don't know, I think it's funny when people think that, you know, mental health, when you bring up the word, it has a certain weight to it. You know, it has, a, especially when you say mental health stigma, people are like, well, and if they're, you don't have a glimpse into it, that's fine. That's why we talk. That's why we're just getting mm-hmm. words out there to give more um, personal experience behind yeah. what seems like something that's kind of like hard to talk about. It's like, well, just well, make and it And I casual. think the pendulum has to swing a little bit. That's why I appreciate yeah. you doing this podcast so much because I think, right, like, there, I'm like, <laughs> it's stigmatized, right? I know. I'm like trying to think about what I'm saying. It's stigmatized, right? And now the pendulum swung kind of on the other side where the yeah. words like mental health or uh, all or meditation or mindfulness, mm-hmm. they're, they're being used in right. so many varying different ways that the def- definitions of them are kind of getting, I guess, bastardized in a little bit of a way, right? Can it's be. like, oh, nowadays, if I hear mindfulness, that means someone's selling me something. Sure. You know sure. What I, I mean? see what you're saying. Yeah, you, you, totally. That, that's what I mean. So it's like, totally. where at, so it's important. And that's why I like that you're doing this podcast because it's important for, for people to remember what mental health actually means. Not what, yeah. not what, you know, a cereal box is trying to tell me. Right. right. Yeah. And how it doesn't have to be either so floaty, kind of like what you're saying. It doesn't have to be like, oh, that's what they're talking about. But it's, for some people like me, it specifically mm-hmm. means like, oh, I have a diagnosis. I have a prescription. You know, this is something I deal with. But you don't have to have a diagnosis to to be a human who needs help with their mental health. And well, my that, therapist. That's saying, right. That's what I was saying before. Of like anyone yeah. that's listening to this, they're listening because they're a human being. Unless yeah. they're an alien in space and the radio transmission. Right. They're like catching Which They them could be. They What's might up, be. Aliens? I hope they are. <laughs> um, but that being said, if you're listening to this, you are, you have you the human condition right yeah. everyone can work. everyone has to work on regulating their emotions yeah and and that's part of mental health it's like figuring out especially during this year 2020 which is why i feel like this podcast and talking about mental health is more relevant than ever mm-hmm. because um maybe someone didn't feel at all like they were dealing with anything it was easy going their emotions were regulated they grew up with a good family who validated their emotions and things were simple and then 2020 hit and maybe they lost, I know they lost something. Everybody lost something with 2020, whether it was a person or a job or um, their coping mechanisms of being able to hang out with friends, being able to go to the gym, being able to have a routine that was stripped from them and they didn't have, you know, they had to find new ways mm-hmm. to cope. And maybe they had a mansion where they could, you know, have, they had their own gym. Their I don't know. It's like there's always kind of thing. something. Right. There's oh, always yeah. something. That oh, someone yeah. is is um, feeling experiencing grief with in some way with this year, um, and even if it's just the anxiety, you could be physically comfortable, you know, materialistically comfortable, mm-hmm. but have so much anxiety about like I don't know what's happening to this world, and yeah. and and with the with the social equal rights uh, movement, it's just like that. I don't know how someone could not be affected by that. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's, 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 um, it's unnerving and jarring in a good way because it's provoking change that needs mm-hmm. to happen. But again, the human, like you said, the human response to all of this is like, Oh gosh. And everyone processes it differently. But the point is it's not easy. Right. No. <laughs> Nothing is it's easy not. here. Right. I mean, none of us were promised that it would be easy. I mean, how would we build character if everything was easy? You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know if we would. We'd be boring as fuck. 
I mean, yeah, that's the kind of thing of like, I, I try to, I, I don't want to like advocate it too much because it's like, oh, I don't want people to think they have to suffer to be good people. But through sure. adversity, you do grow a ton, I agree. you know, yeah. and, and being out of your comfort zone. And mm-hmm. so uh, this is kind of the same thing. I think the pendulum swinging a little bit right yeah. now yeah. on in a huge scale. But yeah. I'm excited about the phoenix kind of that's going to yes. rise from the ashes of this situation. Totally. I um, love that you use that image too because I keep saying refined by fire. Uh, and yeah, like yeah. what's refined by fire other than a phoenix yeah. born out of the ashes? Mm-hmm. I mean, seriously, something beautiful to come from what seems like a garbage fire. Yeah. I mean, this is <laughs> this is America's, America's mom just got cancer, right? And And now – we're gonna and like just like my story right yeah. and then they're gonna we're gonna look back at this and be like man i'm glad i'm glad that happened right because but, of the good things that i think will come from you yeah know I mean? and if we it didn't will, take the action in response to this crazy thing then then we wouldn't have been able to make the changes that needed right. to happen right you know it's like that even that collective consciousness idea of, of us all thinking together you know mm-hmm. i don't know i'm so into john lennon obviously i love the beatles I saw it um, <laughs> and and it, it just feels like a, a circling in history time for yeah the mindset that he was ruminating on and, and it, like you said it's been existing throughout all time oh, you know yeah. what i mean that's history yeah. but um yeah so you came up with um a podcast that just came out this month or last month right I don't even know. I the fifth <laughs> episode came out today. I don't know when this will air, but wow. the fifth episode came out today. They come out once a week, so awesome. a little over a month ago, yeah. Okay. And I'm having such a good time with it. Um, it's called, like you said, it's called Passion Buffet. Yes. And I have conversations with people all the time, like about so taking it back to mental health. Yes. I found that something that helps me, and it is a crutch, obviously, as you can tell, because of how uncomfortable it made me talking about myself. But putting my attention on other people. Yeah. has really helped my mental health. And so it's like whenever I'm starting to reel out or something, I go, yeah. oh, let me, you know, let me, let me. I love that. Look, pay, pay attention to the people around me. And so I was, I started having conversations about, with people about the things they love. And you can see in someone's eyes when they are passionate about something, like right. when they start to light up and they speak in a very particular way. Yeah. And I, it gets me excited. Yeah. And so I was having these conversations already. And then of course, quarantine was happening and, and you know, a, a lot of people are starting podcasts, but um, I was like, I might as well just record these conversations. And so totally. I did and I post them, uh, you know, it's on Apple and uh, Spotify and anywhere else I you love can listen that. to podcasts. Yeah. I, I listened to the one with Nick and, Nick Delon, and I yeah. was, yeah, I was so appreciative of this platform you've created because it's a, rem- it, it's, it's, even though it's not called a mental health podcast, the same way that I talked about, Mm -hmm. and we said, you know, this is kind of open-ended. It's for everyone. It's not just for people who have diagnoses under the DSM-5. Although I love you babies and I relate. Um, (laughs) But it's like, I, it's for humanity. And that's what Passion Buffet is. Because I really do think the more I've kind of, I've I've been branching off into new, I I wouldn't say, philosophy I don't know I've just been reading a lot and um and it's really been like good for my soul Mm -hmm. and and I feel like the word passion is synonymous for life yeah and so that's why when I get suicidal um and struggle Mm -hmm. with that ideation I realize I've lost sight of involving myself in my passions that's a great Um, and that's point yeah, that's that's how I find my life again to want to yeah. live my life. And it doesn't have to be, again, talking about needing validation from the outside. An actor could just act because they want to be seen, mm-hmm. you know, and I know that's not true to my core. I'm a storyteller, but but I, I am not um, naive enough to think that with my history and my trauma, that that isn't part of the validation that I have sought in my life mm-hmm. and, and, and learning to separate the two and, and keep myself as the artistic collaborator for the right reasons. Um, or sorry, the reasons I want, um, cause each person's yeah, yeah, different, yeah. but, uh-huh. um, but yeah, definitely it's like passion could be, and this is like Johnny's episode with joy. Um, yeah. it, it's, it could be whatever for you in that moment, 
makes well, and you that's smile. What's so interesting. Makes your a eyes people, light up. <laughs> yeah, right. And and some people don't even see it in themselves, right? Yeah. Sure. And now I'm becoming more observant. And and anyone listening, I'm I don't want to pitch my podcast too much. I want to be on this. But pitch but it. Said, well, I want I want I think everyone should listen to Nick DeLon's episode. It wasn't yeah. the first episode I recorded, but it's oh, the first okay. episode. I was like, this has to be the first episode because oh. it's called Prairieville Pride. Mm-hmm. And he talks about um, being a uh, young gay man growing up in the 60s and 70s. And he's so charming and so incredible. Yeah, he is. But after that podcast came out, he was like telling me how like a nephew he hadn't spoken to in years reached out and like and like that connected with him, wow. which is incredible. Um, wow. But I know. I, and that's the kind of thing that would never it made me feel so I like when I'm doing the podcast. Mm hmm. I don't think about like, that's the benefit I get of like yeah. record and yeah. having to talk to people. Yeah. But it's designed in a way where it, it's called buffet because you go down and the more episodes we have, you, you might not see something you like. You might not want to sure. watch it. I have an episode coming out about two guys explaining video games to me. Sure. That might not be the episode for you, but it might yeah. be this. It might be this, right? Sure. Um, so there's something um, for everyone, a buffet. You pick what you I what appeals so. to you. I, think I like each that. episode has stuff for everybody. That being said, yeah. You know, it's like and, and some people oh the point I was gonna make is some people don't even know what their passions are. You know, I was sure. speaking to two young ladies or we were FaceTiming two two other actor friends of mine. We were just talking. It was unrelated yeah. to the podcast, and they were talking about women's health and going to the gynecologist and yeah. all of these things. And I was like fascinated. Yeah. And they were like passionate telling me about this yeah and i was like yeah. this needs to be a, a pot. like i'm gonna have a yeah. woman on to talk about just being a mom she's a mother of wow. two young boys yeah and normally if i asked this woman i said what's your passion she probably wouldn't say being a mom she might right but she right. would say something else that is a little more you know high well, standing i right? see what you're saying what what people might expect you to say like yeah. you know yeah, yeah. But, but it's like there's more to it. And I like that you're seeking to find those gems inside these people that yeah. they might not even recognize themselves yet. You're like you, excavating. <laughs> yeah, whatever it is, you you can see when you start to look at for it, you can see people light up about things yeah. they don't even know they're excited about. Yeah, I love you know? though. I love this sense of lighting up, this light bulb, mm-hmm. this, you know, everything. It's like what makes your heart get excited and pump mm-hmm. faster? And like like you said, makes your, your tongue spin with words because you yeah. can't help yourself. It's like mm-hmm. that's – you can't ignore that. That's human behavior that goes back to your psychology of just like I'm just observing yeah. what's happening in front of me. Like, mm-hmm. you know, it, it's – we can get down to the specifics of it, but it's quite simple and obvious. Yeah, you know? I, I'm super appreciative to have – I feel like I fell into it in a way. Yeah. And I'm very appreciative that I did because I'm having – fucking blast i'm having awesome. a good time yeah i'm really and enjoying the graphics it. look dope so you're you do those on your i own? do the yeah i do yeah i appreciate so you're an artist that. too like i'm not an artist no visual? i taught myself how to do that just for the podcast how i i got an ipad and there's an app called procreate and i just oh. i just did it i don't they know look so cool that's very sweet yeah for anyone listening i do an illustration of all my guests the little but it's it and i'm not knocking myself you could do it like you really could it, it's essentially like doing a coloring book like it, it really is but it but i am cool. proud of them i love them and, and i think yeah it's a cool you way should to be like, and my guests really like them you know so it's yeah. like a little incentive they're like oh i get my illustration done you know it's a fun thing for them yeah but i love that it see that reminds me of of the roller skating fad that's going on right now and mm-hmm. and how i have like I, we talked about this before the episode started how that's been my fun kind of thing right now um that I mean, I skated when I was a kid, but sure. but I see people doing crazy cool skills on, you know, line. And I was like, I'm in quarantine or was, I guess. I guess now we're in, you know, still safer home. But I uh, was like, I'm going to fucking get some roller skates and just skate. And I had a friend who's really good who posts videos. And I was like, I'm just going to try to figure out what she does and and figure it out. And I fall out of my ass so many times, mm-hmm. which is great. That's great right. for the ego. <laughs> mm-hmm. well it and, is and, and not to bring it back i always i'm like i feel like i'm a cult leader in improv because i love it so much and i'm always pitching <laughs> but this is what i was gonna say earlier when you and i before we were recording we we're speaking yeah. about what you just oh, described yeah. is improv right right you did it as a kid right yeah. we were the kids on the playground yeah you get good at falling on your ass yeah right as little kids and that's all improv is it's like you're right as just laugh kids, it off and keep going think about a little kid yeah. How many times that they're failing all the time? When yeah. you see a little kid 
tying her shoes. You're not like, yeah. you don't see her like tying her shoes and like, or like saying the ABCs. They're not, they're like, oh, just saying the ABCs wrong. And, like, and they don't get up. frustrated with themselves. Not Yeah, for the most you know? part. And then we, they for the learn. Most <laughs> well, I'm, I think the thing is, I don't know. This is kind of just hitting me. So this might be wrong, but I feel like that frustration is learned. We, as adults, we forget how Ooh. to fail, you know? Yeah. We forget how to, like as adults, we don't fail often enough. Yeah. Whereas little kids, we fail all the time. Well, and we're just, we're so aware of failure and so afraid of it Mm -hmm. that we um, avoid it altogether. Mm -hmm. Right. And we keep ourselves from experiencing, which is the reason we're here, I think. Mm -hmm. I think we're here to experience. We're here to, you know, we're a concept and now we're a body. And so it's like, well, let's do something with it. Let's feel it out. Let's go do stuff. Right. You know, but, but if you get scared... Because you've been hurt before, whether it's mm-hmm. a relationship mm-hmm. or whether it's um, skating or improv or, or whatever, presenting yourself to a new situation. It's like, mm-hmm. no, nah, but not, you know, mm-hmm. probably best yeah. not even trying, you know, because mm-hmm. I'm afraid I failed before. I'll probably fail again. I'm like, yeah, you probably will. But that's a good thing. That's good. You thing. know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. and not For even sure. not even lying, not saying, no, you won't I'm like, no, you probably will. I hope but you that's do. good. Yeah. yeah. Like, I let's go make do. an ass of ourselves and laugh about it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I remember you saying that um, in the audition room when when we met. You said something about, like, learning or letting yourself genuinely laugh. Do you remember that? I remember I remember you laughing at me because <laughs> for something. And it, it was akin to that. Because you laugh. I, I know I've complimented your, your laugh enough on this. You have such a nice laugh. And you were such a light. In that audition, how long were we there for? Well, were you there the day before as well? I don't even remember. I remember being there for a day and it was like all day long. I drove in the day before, was there for several hours, and then drove in that second day where all all of us were there together, the pair of the guys and girls. There were like seven of us and that was probably like five, six hours. We were there for five hours at least. And those rooms, if anyone's not an actor, has never been in one, they're nerve wracking. You know, you're just waiting and anticipating. All spread out. All spread out. Like trying to learn our lines. Everyone's weird. And you're like this light (laughs) in the room, you know, like smiling and laughing. I think I was doing yoga or something. You were all (laughs) over the place in a really nice way. You were truly, you were a beacon in that room and you made me feel so relaxed. So I don't remember what was... I, I guess I don't laugh that often. I think is what we talked about. Oh, you know? okay. Which I, I found I, funny because I was like, but you're in improv. And, well, think about was, this. This is going to make me sound like a snob, but in I've Improv seen, people, they don't laugh at themselves. Is that what it's you're going to say? I laugh at myself <laughs> all the time. It's the fact that I've seen so many funny things. Oh, that yeah. Are, that it's like I've seen the funniest <laughs> things on the planet. That yeah, yeah. Like in my brain, I know this is like snobbish and... No, but you've immersed unrealistic. yourself in the funny corner of this I, world. I've seen so many funny things <laughs> that now, and it's a sad thing. I'm like callous now. I've got like a comedy callous. <laughs> it's like I. Comedy callous. Yeah, it's like I, I don't, now I don't find regular things as funny as I use. I still find them funny. Sure. I just don't laugh out loud. Sure. But I do now appreciate with my, with being <laughs> present when I do laugh out loud. It's great. It's the best. <laughs> yeah, it's so fun. It is. That's so funny. I'm the opposite of you because I laugh at everything. Um, I love that. Everything. I'm. People always say I'm the best friend to have around because I make them feel like they're hilarious. Well, how like, special is that? That's such a special thing. That's such a special um, quality. Not everyone they, does that. <laughs> what they you know don't what I mean? know. That, I mean, yes. And I genuinely am laughing because I just find everything fun and humorous and like interesting. But I also like I've used laughing my whole life as a um, as a coping mechanism. Sure. Um, yeah. And as a as a defense when my dad was like verbally abusive, I laughed. That was my mm. only defense against this yeah. man who drank a lot. And, and I would yeah. just be like, <laughs> And no, he'd be no. like, what the fuck are you laughing about? And I would just be like, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's sure. like, I, even, even when I'm crying, I'm normally laughing when mm-hmm. I'm nauseous, I'm laughing. Like it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's weird. I think people, yeah. but I, I'm okay with that. I'm sure. okay. And I think it's, it's, I don't know. It probably goes back to, I don't know if you do the Enneagram, but I'm an Enneagram four and mm-hmm. I have learned about myself that I delight in feeling unique. <laughs> so that's wonderful yeah but it's it's kind of even me admitting that hurts you know do you think it hurts because of a social aspect of like oh if I feel like being unique 
if I, if I enjoy feeling unique, that means I think I'm special and that means I'm a shithead. Maybe, maybe. And it's also kind of like, I want to be effortlessly unique, which I am, but I don't ever want to come across as though I'm trying, which I'm not, but maybe sometimes I am because I'm aware. You know what I mean? It's that. You know, it's weird. And it's something I think we're both <laughs> battling. You and I are we're same in a lot of ways, but you and I are exact opposite. <laughs> I'm like constantly battling being <laughs> what? the same as everyone. <laughs> battling you know what I mean? being- Really? Yeah, like like not but being I so weird. I that I am. Yeah, wait, wait, sure. Wait. What do you mean? I'd break yours down. So you just said you're you're constantly like fighting to to stay the. Well, I'm I'm gonna screw up the way you said it, but like fighting to stay unique and be your own individual person. Is that what you were saying? Well, I was saying I I am super unique and like right. I. But at the same time, like the parts of me that I genuinely enjoy that are like other people, I'm resistant towards admitting them because they're it makes me more normal. Yeah. For instance, I'm the opposite. Van Gogh being my favorite artist. What's, a lot of people love Van Gogh and is their yeah. favorite artist. And he's so well known uh-huh. that that stupid artist part of me is like, now I got to pick a new one because everybody loves Van Gogh and I can't be the same as everyone. Yeah. Well, that's how <laughs> I felt about podcasting. Right. Oh, sure. Like, I, the reason I didn't do it for so long, I've, I wanted to do a podcast for years and I, I didn't do it because this was our year. <laughs> yeah. Everyone was like, oh, I've uh, everyone's got a podcast and they do. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. But mm-hmm. I was a guest on another podcast, a, a comedy podcast, and I had so much fun. Yeah. I was like, why am I uh, not allowing myself yeah. to have this just because my ego is saying, oh, everyone else does it. You know yeah, what I mean? And I'm right. so glad that, that that I did because, um, yeah. It, I'm glad I'm you did it. too. And it's that mindset. It's another one of those things I have to tell myself and I think everyone should tell themselves is like, hey, there's a room for you if you pull up a chair. Yeah. You know? Like yeah, everyone a- thinks like, oh, the table is like way overcrowded. And it's like, well, yeah, but if you pull yourself up a chair, there's a spot for you. You just well, have to take the, the initiative. That's the thing of like – changing your mindset i don't hear this as often but changing my mindset from a limiting mindset to a a mindset of abundance right yeah yes absolutely um abundance there's versus enough, scarcity you know, there, yeah exactly scarcity right and it's a mindset thing um, yeah for sure and i think that's a lot of times where when, when someone you look has it all Mm. They can someone can have it all and still operate from a place of scarcity. Some yeah. of the most wealthy people I know financially are have the most scarce mindsets. Totally, totally. Um, and and that's where a lot of the greed comes from. Greed for for them at least. I can't speak for everybody. I'm sure there's a power dynamic in there as well. But True. greed and and the fear of that, you know. No, so, you're right. Well, yeah. I mean, just in general, it's like you never really know what's going on in someone else's life because you're not them and that's why we can't compare pain and we can't compare ourselves it's the thief Mm. of joy um and knowing that the more i wrap my mind up in someone else's concerns the less room i have for my own Mm. and the less Mm -hmm. room i have for what is going for me that i'm completely overlooking because i'm Mm -hmm. so wasting my time and someone else's instagram or 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 someone else's you know what i mean it's just like their their career i'm so like that, then I'm like, wait, but I, I could have been doing all this for mine and like, yeah. oh, you know, or whatever it is. And that goes back. I think it boils back down to passion of like, I literally have a list of things. that's like things that are good for me and, mm-hmm. and things that are based in passion. And like, whenever I'm feeling off or depressive or negative, I'm like, if I can get myself, I can will myself, Yeah. which sometimes with my depression, I do need to just lay down. But, but there are times even in my depression where I have like an anxious energy that's angry and frustrated that, that is enough of an impetus to get me off my ass to do one of these, Yeah. you know? And I'm like, I can, I can paint, I can skate, I can study German right now because mm-hmm. why not, you yeah. know? And I'll feel better once I figure out how to say something funny in German to focus on, you know? Yeah, yeah. the pain The pain of, how, well, how does this go? The pain of changing has to be less than the pain of staying the same. Yeah, I like right? that. Does that make sense? So it's like, I hear people complain a lot, a lot of complainers, um, 
and the things that they complain about, they could do something about, but yeah. they're comfortable in their negativity. That's a, yes. that's a place of comfort for them because they know it so well. well so the, the pain yeah. of changing is not as is too severe as the pain yeah. they're feeling right now. Yeah, that no, that's a very a good point. That's a very good point of having to sit with yourself and go, hey, am I going to let myself sit with this? Like, is my self-pity that important? Mm. And I say, I, I feel like I, I have... I'm able to say these things because I am the queen of melancholy and and, mm. and, and and ruminating and just like in my depressions, I just am like, I have to be so dramatic in them sure. for them, for everyone else to see how much I'm suffering, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that, that was a huge part of my past was just like, and it doesn't take away from the reality of my depressions. They mm-hmm. suck and I don't have to explain that to anyone I know I know what they feel like but I also don't have to like you said sit in it I Mm. I, and I sometimes I can't help that and that's where the grace comes in with yourself and the knowing thyself Mm -hmm. but also knowing yourself enough to go can I do something right now that will make me feel one degree better or am I actually finding a comfort sitting in this self-pity victimizing you know state well, I'm glad you said grace because a lot of times I try to, I'm just getting this perspective where I treat my loved ones very well, mm-hmm. but I don't, why don't I treat myself the way mm-hmm. I treat a loved one? You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, so it's 100%. like, yeah, forgiving yourself, taking care of yourself. Treat, if you can get out of bed, get out of bed. But if you can't, you can't. And, and that's okay too, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so you um, mentioned your therapy experience and your, um, uh, you said, I don't know if you said something about like medication or anything, but did you ever have any diagnosis or were you just like, oh, I kind of deal with a little bit of anxiety or a little bit of depression, but it was never, you know no, what I mean? No, I, I haven't. And the reason I haven't um, taken steps that far is because, and maybe this is a fear thing too, but I have, um, I mean, I think a lot like a lot, like a lot of other people, I have in a very addictive personality. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, and so I've coped with, uh, you know, alcohol and yeah. stuff like that before. Yeah. And so I think for me, it's like I've gotten to the point now where I'm, I've given myself the tools to yeah. feel good. Well, you found yeah. what works for you. I think so. I think I, I found that. what works for me. And, and, yeah. and if I can do that, and I still have my down times, but it's never right. as severe as, like, I don't have suicidal I- sure. I- ideologies or, or anything like that. Those never come up. And so, and now I just take, you know, I ride the roller coaster of life. I feel right, it right. all and I forgive myself and I don't beat myself up for, for feeling it. But awesome. I think if it ever got to the point where I was, um, it, it it slowed me down in any way. Right. Then I, then I would I would have to probably see somebody. And maybe in the future I, I may, you know. But it, well, I'm, heck, I'm a, I mean, yeah. even making it through this year, it's so cool to see that because the truth is everyone has a different path. You know what I mean? Mm. And that's why I'm so grateful that you did this episode, that we got to do an episode about your story and your experience because I know there are other people who will relate to you exactly. You That's know, so sweet. and no, it's true. And, and it's, it's so helpful because uh, again, I, I, I want, I love doing everyone's episodes because everyone is so different and everyone mm-hmm. is finding what works for them. And that's the encouragement of, of telling people like, it's, it doesn't have to be like a dead end anywhere because there's so many options out there mm-hmm. for, for what can help you, what you can turn to, what you can really, you know, and, and it's a little bit of everything you know? Mm -hmm. And, and whereas I, I have focused a lot on, on my therapy and, and, um, my, um, my medications that have helped me specifically so much because I I have the extreme varying chemistry of bipolar, Mm -hmm. but it, it doesn't take away from how none of that would have helped me if I hadn't been showing up and doing the work on my own right. along the way. And that's right. what so right. many of my friends, like, I, I just think it's amazing that you have found a way to embrace all of your emotions. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And to just, yeah. like you said, ride the roller coaster. I love mm-hmm. that because you're right. Every human, to some extent, whatever their roller coaster looks like, it may mm-hmm. not be top thrill dragster like mine, you know, it's yeah. like shooting you up and shooting you down, yeah. you know, but maybe it still has a bunch of loops and it still has a mm-hmm. high and then a low. And, and it's like, that's for you to figure out and you have, and you mm-hmm. are, and we always, 
one day at a time are, you know? Yeah. So that's such a, that's, that's <laughs> so great. That's great. Yeah. I, I think that's a good point of like, we're just all along for the ride and, and just trusting again, whether I'm lying to myself or not, I've gotten to the point where I genuinely trust that everything's going to be okay. Yeah. I love um, that. So whether I'm lying or not, I, at least I've got a, <laughs> you know, at least I feel pretty yeah. good, you know? Um, I love that. Um, okay. So what in like closing remarks, do you feel like you want to leave with our audience? Is there anything kind of on your mind? Yeah. Um, two things. One, I mean, I think we said a lot of it, but, yeah. um, you know, just kind of treat yourself with some respect and, and mm-hmm. love just like you would another human being, you know, uh, that's yeah. what I, I have to give myself. I have to take myself out of myself sometimes and, yeah. And just really tr- not beat myself up and treat myself like a loved one. Like I, I feel like inner child, sometimes people can roll their eyes at that term. Right. Yeah. But it's so true of like you're talking yeah. to yourself like you're a child, you know, yeah. in, in, a, in a beautiful way of like, hey, yeah. it's OK. Yeah. You're going to be fine. Get back up and, and, and do your thing, you know. Yeah. Um, and I don't know when this episode is going to air, but um, and not to pitch myself too much, but I think it's a really important thing. But do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Uh, I'm in a film called Annabellum. It goes oh, yeah. on demand on um, September 18th. So I don't know when this comes out, but it, we'll be- it's such an important. The reason I do want to bring it up is because it because it's such an important movie right now. We filmed it in 2019, but it rings more true today than than it. I think it even did then. You know, so wow. um, it's 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 pretty important. I feel very grateful to to be a part of it. I play That's another huge. bad guy. I play a bad guy <laughs> in it. But that being said, the film. So I'm not condoning my actions in the film but the film <laughs> overall um i'm i'm really proud of and, and i heck I'm, yeah um, yeah i'm so excited to see i saw i saw something you're sharing about that and i was like mm-hmm. dude that looks dope it, it was looks dope. so, it was so cool yeah yeah it was there's two um the, i they're artists two directors um it's a couple um uh, bush and rents and they they um gerard bush and chris rents wow. and um they are their artists that they wrote and directed this film and working with them was just such a pure joy. And it's wow. the way they took something so brutal and made mm-hmm. it so beautiful at the same time. It's, it's, it's intense. Yeah. But it's, so I think excited. it's, it's going to be a good movie and such an important movie. This yeah. Year. And, and, and it comes really out on, on a streaming platform. Yeah. Well, unfortunately uh, the, 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 you know, movie theaters aren't really right, happening right. much right now they try to release it in april and it didn't work out but okay. um it's video on demand so wherever okay. you can you can rent it um i'm definitely going to i'm so excited please. uh oh you're gonna God. love it, it or, or yeah it's it's a good one it's I'm, I'm excited about it awesome and also tell us where to find you on social medias oh boy i'm not great at that either i mean uh, wait, even just your your instagram handle and, yeah, and fashion instagram- buffet uh, yeah, TC Mathern on Instagram. I think it might be periods in there. I don't know anything. I'm so bad about this. And then, yeah, Passion Buffet on Instagram. <laughs> you'll post it. You'll post it. Thank you. Um, and just know I'm awful at it. Um, but that being said, <laughs> I appreciate you having me here. Yeah, Instagram, uh, Passion Buffet, and TC Mathern. I'm on there. Perfect. Well. All right. We'll put those below, guys. You're Thank so you so sweet. much for being here, TC. Thank you for having me. I had, a, I had such a good time. Heck yeah, same here. Catch him on the big screen. Ga- big screen? Big screen. I'm not on the big screen um, yet. Big screen in your house. <laughs> Everyone's like, I'm working with the 30th. <laughs> this is oh, the no. worst time. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you guys, seriously. Though, up, TC, bro. you're great. Thank you're you. Sweet. And Thank um, you yeah, catches movies and podcasts. <laughs>